through. Hey guys, how are we doing? Recent news has brought word of one Daniel Radcliffe playing, portraying, taking on the mantle of Weird Al Yankovic, a polka parody musician extraordinaire, Weird Al Yankovic. I am interested since Weird Al was sort of my introduction into a lot of music. This plays a wide a range of genres with themes that connect to my adolescent childhood brain that made me go hee hee ha ha. So I thought it may be constructive, nay necessary, to go back through the great Weird Al parodies and compare them song by song to their original counterparts, deciding definitively which one deserves to exist and which one can be erased from history. Now, I was genuinely surprised to find out that not every song on a Weird Al album is a parody. Some are just in the style of another band, while others are completely original songs that are vaguely reminiscent of other popular musical trends at the time. And since he started in the 80s, and so shall we. And so our journey begins with our first song, Like a... Now, it may be hard to tell in the present day, but Madonna used to be one of our greatest pop sensations. She was an international celebrity, and she was someone that was obsessed over by the American population. She is the quintessential 1980s pop queen. A little sexy, but ultimately not really that offensive when you dig into it from hindsight makes all the CD burning and the outrage a little silly. Like a Virgin is a bona fide classic. The bass riff, the hook, the way her voice just so innocently bounces over the top of it. And it's hard to deny the infectious value of just a classic 80s pop song. Just synthesize enough to smooth it out, but early enough in production quality to still give it a tangible feeling. Missing a little bit of bass in the mix, which probably would have been added if the song was produced nowadays, but for the time, this is just classic 80, just fucking just put it right there. What is the song about? What does the song contain? The very debate that starts out one quintessential Quentin Tarantino film, Reservoir Dogs, is the dick so big that it's like she's being fucked for the first time or does she just really miss this guy she hasn't been fucked in so long that she's i take it more in the intimate sense that this is like her first time she is like a virgin her nerves she's a little bit scared there's an excitement to it discovering someone's body for me this is a little more sex positive and it's so harmless that you can't really get mad at it or look too deep into it. I think it's really just a clever, cheeky hook that she knew would cause a little bit of controversy. So it's going to be very difficult for Weird Al to plus up Madonna's Like a Virgin since her voice is just so good. And Weird Al, the voice isn't really what he is known for. Here, instead of Like a Virgin, he is Like a Surgeon. Like a surgeon. Getting for the very first so the premise with Like a Surgeon seems to be that Weird Al is taking on the persona of a brand new surgeon into the medical field. One that has finally made it through med school. Just an intern with a mistake or two. Last in their class. Barely pass at the institute. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid a malpractice suit. He gets rid of all the sexiness that Madonna scenes with and makes it more appropriate vocal-wise for the subject matter. Even he knew it was lacking a little bit of bass because in this backing track, there's definitely a lot more lower end in the music, I think because they're probably using a real bass guitar, so it gives it just a little more thick, authentic tone. 
I do have to admit that the premise of this parody is one that I find really funny. A surgeon, someone that you trust quite literally with your life in their hands. As you can see, he is a quack, a disgrace of the AMA, because my patients die. <laughs> yeah, my patients die before they can pay. The horrid thought of going in for surgery. And the last thing you see as you're sipping down gas is Weird Al coming in with his accordion ready to operate on you. So now the hard decision becomes, do I want to keep the parody or keep the original alive? And what deserves to be shot into the atmosphere for all of time, never to be heard again? This is probably the single best Madonna song and the best that Madonna ever was and the reason why she is so iconic. I think Like a Virgin is an absolute classic and deserves a spot on our playlist. And now number one on our playlist, we got Madonna. Let's see if our next artist is up to the task of going toe to toe with Weird Al Yankovic. It's interesting to see what has permeated throughout our pop culture. What has sort of siphoned through into my childhood? What did I gather from the era before mine? And what is still being pushed through this very decade? The year of our 2022. Does anyone care about Huey Lewis? Anyone that doesn't watch American Psycho? This man right here, I believe, is a Huey Lewis. And these boys over here are the news. Do they talk about news? I don't think so. Do they talk about sports? Maybe, but this song seems to be talking about drugs. He wants a new drug. One that won't make me sick. Pepto-Bismol, maybe, perhaps. One that won't make me crash my car. Have you crashed your car while on some sort of substance, Huey? Damn it, I'm trying this new drug but I just keep crashing my damn car. If only there's one where I didn't crash my car. One that won't hurt my head. One that won't make my mouth too dry or eyes too red. Well, it seems like the first stanza is talking about pot, but pot doesn't hurt your head, nor does it make you crash your car. Maybe we're not talking about a specific drug, maybe we're just talking kind of general. One that won't make me nervous, wondering what to do. The one that makes me feel like I feel when I'm with you. Really, he's talking about a girl, or he's talking about a drug that will give him the same sensation as being with the girl that he enjoys. The one when he's alone with you, reading the news, or watching sports? I can understand that. Not much in terms of the theming beyond that. You get the premise, you get the hook, and then you get that sick saxophone solo until the end of time. And if you don't like saxophone solos, then it probably won't hit you. But for me, I enjoy them. To an extent, they can't oversay they're welcome. I want a new duck. Woman won't try to bite. Okay, so there isn't a saxophone solo. It's more of a keyboard solo with a few duck sounds in it. His duck is sort of a bad duck, I guess. He, the duck tries to bite. It chews a hole through his socks. It quacks all night. He wants one with big webbed feet that knows how to wash my car and keep his room real neat. Weird Al just wants a nice duck friend to live with him in his home to occupy his space and not make a mess of the house or try to nest in the bathroom sink. When you listen to an album called Dare To Be Stupid, where it's daring you, it's telling you up front, we're gonna get silly, we're gonna get quirky, and we're gonna get stupid. When we're not up front, then I think it's only to be expected to get a song as silly as I Want A New Duck. And I think the innocent nature about it with the really funny lines, keep it fresh enough, keep it funny enough, that carries it through the track. On a production level, it sounds almost dead similar to the Huey Lewis one, but there's just a little more cheekiness to Weird Al's version that I think Huey Lewis is lacking. And for that reason, I Want a New Duck will be our first Weird Al song on the playlist. We are one-to-one -one with the original and the Weird Al parody. 
I can't wait to see how this continues. It's hard to imagine a more iconic song than Madonna's Like a Virgin, but I do think Girls Just Wanna Have Fun is pretty damn close to it. Cindy, the queen representation of all women being careless, putting their hair down, shaking their rumper roonies. One may want to reject this song at first for being simplistic, a little silly, a little lacking in nuance or something deeper than that. But I think when you look at the verses, when you really listen to what she's saying, how she feels inside herself, she has these pressures telling her to grow up, to change, to be a woman and grab on to life, a husband, whatever. And she's saying we don't have to. I just want to have fun. A universal feeling that breaches female, male, non-binary individuals and pulls us together. All human beings want to have fun. We will even risk life and limb during a deadly pandemic just to go to the beach or a bar or our favorite place to hang out and move our booty. And as you can see, she does like to grow. I think it's very important to acknowledge the growing change in our culture, in our social climates, how having fun, how leisure time is something to strive for. It is something built into our DNA. And that's something we were discovering throughout the 20th century. Unfortunately, work balance has kind of taken over. Work has sort of kind of engulfed the leisure. This song still rings true and is actually incredibly well produced. The chorus isn't as simple as girls just want to have fun. You bring the lower voices in with almost a drop beat and get that girls just wanna. It adds such a good change up right after the chorus that gives you just an extra little hook that you didn't think you were gonna get. It has just a little touch, just a little sprinkle of Caribbean flavor in the production that I think works really, really well here. Girls, they wanna have lunch. Oh, girls just want Some girls wanna buy new shoes, while others like to drive trucks and have tattoos. But the one thing that binds us all together is that we wanna have lunch into that. I can't disagree. I enjoy fun. I enjoy lunch. Weird Al switching the perspective from Cindy Lauper to a potential boyfriend, a dating person, a masculine eye looking at women and saying these bitches love their lunch. We know that Weird Al genuinely has a nice voice and can mimic the musical stylings of whoever he's playing. Here is a choice too seen it off, too seen it grumbly. Is it judgmental? Is it uh, problematic in any way for a man to be like, oh, these girls, they just want to be eating food and beauty standards and relationship with food for women is kind of toxic in the best of days. While I do think this song is fun and I think it's harmless, I like the inclusion. I think that Cindy Lauper's version is just so genuine. It comes from such a hopeful place and having fun and dancing and just being sick of sitting there with your bag and watching the boys in the mosh pit. So I, as a dirty little feminist, must go with Cindy Lauper or else I might be a Cindy Larper. Goddamn, if I ever have a video where I'm happy with my Banes, I will end my life right there. Here's a hot take. Here's a little greasy Todd hot take. I don't like Michael Jackson. I don't like his music. Never really did. Never cared for it. Don't like the man. He kind of wears me out. A little creepy. Oh, he's so bad. Your butt is mine. You can tell that he's bad because he says, hey, you, you with the butt. I'm going to have that butt. I'm going to have that butt right here. In broad daylight, I'm telling you on how I feel. Going to hurt your mind. Don't shoot to kill. Are you shooting to injure or are you saying just don't shoot because we're going to fist fight? I'm going to fist fight you. The man... Notorious for not even taking off his glove. 
I'm telling you, just watch your mouth. I know your game, what you're about. From reading this, I can tell that we're dealing with a very bad boy indeed. This sort of feels like the scene in Quentin Tarantino's holy second Tarantino reference this episode, and I don't even like his movies that much. This reminds me of the scene in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a movie that I did really enjoy, where Mr. Brisley challenges our hero, Rick Dalton's bodyguard, to a fight in which Brad Pitt's character throws him into a car door. Sort of feels like the same energy that Bruce Lee was giving off in that scene. The musical track is fine. I never really liked how they produce his songs. Maybe Weird Al can make me giggle. So the entire concept of this album, or at least the imagery of it, is aping Michael Jackson. He has a jacket on with a comically large amount of buckles on it. He's in a jerry curl. Instead of the album being called Bad, it's called Even Worse, as in Michael Jackson was declaring the quality of the album by the title. And just the fact that he repurposes the butt line from the first line in Michael Jackson's song and changes it to your butt is wide while well, mine is too. Regardless of how insensitive this song could seem, I think that was a clever little bit of play on words. Though I think saying I have more chins than Chinatown I don't know the politics behind that. I'm just saying it makes me go, <laughs> hmm. So while I find that fat shaming or making fun of fat people is distasteful, I think he does it in a way that is sort of innocent. It's comical and he's pointing fun at himself. Though he isn't fat and he put on a fat suit for the music video, should I even choose either of these songs? I don't care for the Michael Jackson version. I'm going to hesitantly put it on the playlist, but just know I am not happy about it. And we have a pattern forming. Now, if you know me, you know that Nirvana has never been my favorite band. Nirvana just has never really made music that I enjoyed. But you're not really supposed to enjoy it. It's supposed to sort of be anti-music. I don't know. My feelings are very complicated. Being a punk from the Seattle area, my feelings on the legacy of Nirvana is very complicated. I respect Kurt, I respect a lot of things he's trying to say through his music, but fundamentally, the songs just aren't that pleasurable. Smells Like Teen Spirit is probably their most famous, the song that kickstarted the entire grunge genre, one that is still thriving today. God damn, why is this song five minutes long? That's probably one of the reasons why I didn't really like them. But what is the song saying? We hear it all the time, but do we really dissect it? Do we listen to it? Load up your guns, bring your friends. It's fun to lose and pretend she's overboard and self-assured. Oh no, I know a dirty word. They're using a lot of double speak, a lot of words that can be taken in two different ways, which I find is the cleverness of the song. And I think the way that Kurt sings it is easy to lose those double meanings. He obscures them on purpose. It's fun to lose and to pretend. It's fun to lose your friends, to shoot your friends, or pretend she's overboard, meaning she fell off the ship, or she's over bored. She needs stimulation. And that stimulation, I think, is a music show. Because when we get to the chorus, the lights are out. It's less dangerous. Here we are now entertain us. I feel like that has always been the crowd in the venue going, entertain us. The lights have gone out. I feel stupid and contagious. Here we are now entertain us.
I've always really liked the hello, 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 how low. I think that's a clever little twist on lines. The second verse really has me confused though with I'm worse at what I do best and for the gift I feel blessed. Our little group has always been and always will until the end. This seems hopeful. This seems joyful. This doesn't seem like the sad, melancholy song that everyone claims Nirvana writes. We're doing what we can and I feel happy for what we've been able to achieve and we're gonna do our best making music if everything goes according to plan. I hate the mainstream use of it. I hate the utter satirization of it. But at its core, it's not hard to see why it is such an iconic song in our culture, or it was at the time. Just perfectly captures that restless spirit we were dealing with in 91. This is one of the very few genuine misses for Weird Al. I feel like his version of the song is very surface level. I don't know what this song's about. We can't hear what Kurt is saying. It's so hard to sing. Where is my lyric sheet? I forgot the Nets verse. I understand maybe being annoyed with the oversaturation of Nirvana and Smells Like Teen Spirit, but this feels like very lame criticism. I just can't hear what they're saying. It's so bad, bad band, band is bad. They don't sound like Madonna. Seeing distinctly, we don't wanna buy our album. Where Nirvana, a garage band from Seattle, was sure beats raising cattle. I get that that may have been the joke at the time where it's like, I don't know what these people are singing. Punk music existed. Nirvana were just kind of the only ones that break through into that pop sphere. So I guess that rougher sound was new to the masses. To me, it just sounds like garage punk music. So I think... Weird Al kind of missed the point with this one, though I do enjoy that he keeps it at a nice, crispy 3 minutes, 40 seconds. This is probably one of the greatest songs ever created, depending on who you ask or whatever. I'm gonna forfeit my anti-Nirvana bias for selling out of Smells Like Teen Spirit. You can't touch this. This. There was an era once where our stupid pandering dance songs, our main mass dance music whose sole purpose was to get you out of your seat and dance, to get you to just vaguely scurry along to a hip hop beat, something that was vaguely rap, but not too much to offend the most sensitive ears, one that anyone could enjoy could be played in a commercial or a movie. Nowadays, I feel like a pop song like this is just like the most obnoxious, annoying, in-your-face, functional shit that they could cram onto the airwaves. Look how f***ing fly MC Hammer is with his lean. He's not gonna even stand up straight for the album cover. He is too cool for that. Does this song really mean anything to me besides the novelty of it? Not really. I think there's a lot of fun rhymes in it. I like when he says, oh my lord. MC Hammer does not get enough credit for bringing hip hop to the masses, I believe. Just like how Nirvana brought punk to the masses, MC Hammer really breaking through. You can't touch this. You can't touch his rhymes. You can't touch his beat. Once he hammers in a beat, it's set for life. And I can't watch this. Yo, give me that remote control. Can't watch this. Fuck. Well, apparently you can touch it because Weird Al touched all over it to make I can't watch this. Talking about the crap on TV, the shit you see on TV. It makes me so bored. It makes me say, oh my lord, what is this garbage here? I want to cover my eyes and plug my ears. America's Funniest Home Videos. Can't believe my eyes. When I see the kind of stuff that wins first prize. I agree. 
AFHV is a long-standing American institution, and I think it's about time we say no more. You're not funny. Is that price money worth it? Is it worth getting your video on America's Funniest Home Video anymore? The internet is this. Why does that program still exist? We got The Cosby Show. Ugh, can't really watch that anymore. We got Roseanne. Really can't watch that anymore. Can't stand Twin Peaks. Wish they lynched those donut-eating freaks. Well, I take personal offense as a donut-eating freak who loves David Lynch and Twin Peaks because I'm a basic Washington bitch. I am gonna forsake the, um, I don't think I like this version, a Weird Al's parody, and MC Hammer is God, so I think Weird Al might be on a bit of a losing streak, because we have had two original songs in a row. Will we be able to break that with our next pick? Why was music so long back then? A boy pop band with hate crime, Marky Mark, I believe this is him. This looks like Marky Mark, breaking the law, breaking the rules, hanging tough. Why is there a smaller picture of them inside of the bigger picture of them? They were kids, in fact, the new kids on the block. They may never have reached the heights of Backstreet Boys or NSYNC, but they were precursors to them. They ran so they could. This song's about the right stuff. You got it, baby. The first time was great. Second time was a blast. Third time I fell in love. Now I hope it lasts. I can see it in your walk. Tell them when you talk. See it in everything you do, even in your thoughts. It's a basic, boring Poppy song about you girl out there. Hey, you girl, you got it. it kind of sounds like a Paula Abdul song. The oh, oh, uh oh, with a very, very 80s backing track. Doesn't need to be four minutes, that's for sure, especially since they don't really have like verses. It's funny looking at Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and how they each try to showcase their voice is really just our talent driving us through. We're such magical singers. It doesn't matter. If we're making pop songs. Who gives a shit if we sing? Alright, we have redeemed ourselves slightly. Uh-oh, Oreo. What's in the middle? The white stuff. The white stuff. You know, when you hear the term white stuff, you automatically think of cocaine, probably. But to take a new Kids on the Block song and make it about Oreos, I find very unobjectionable, especially compared to what we just witnessed from Weird Al. I say this is a total and complete plus up from the original, as well as being two minutes, 42 seconds. He perfectly imitates their voices. You have all the parts in there. I rub it on my rose, mix it with my coffee, and spread it on my toes. I love the white stuff, baby. And you can take it in whatever context you want. He's very explicitly seen about Oreos, but I would not fault you for thinking of something else. And you're back in it, Alley Boy. We have three more songs to go. Before memes could fly, there was a Rico a Suave right up there with too sexy for my shirt before it's time. Truly, looking at the lyrics for the first time, I can say this is a hilarious song. Gerardo, you made something that is cringy and funny. Look at this guy. Look how seriously he's taking himself. He don't drink. He don't smoke. He ain't into dope. He doesn't want no coke. Ask me how I do it. I cope. Coping, something of a dirty word nowadays. The only addiction has to do with the female species. The species of females. Because they're a different fucking organism than man. Men are humans. The human base is man. 
And then there's a subspecies called females. He likes them raw like sushi, so he doesn't wear condoms. Gerardo doesn't wear condoms. We're burning album covers when Madonna said she was like a virgin, but this man saying he likes to eat women raw like sushi is perfectly okay for the radio waves, baby. So don't judge a book by the cover. There's more to being a Latin lover. You know how to deal with a woman that won't let go. The price you pay for being a gigolo. I did not know that that's where the story was going. Is his sex addiction that pushed him into the industry or was he a gigolo and discovered his addiction through it that's why i juggle two or three i ain't one to commit you can't admit you can't admit that bit hey 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 take that for the record okay i can commit so again don't let my lyrics mislead you I don't love you, but I need you. Would you rather have me lie or take a piece of your pie and say bye or be honest and rub your thighs? Rub in your thighs! I love this guy. I love this song. It's gonna be really hard for Weird Al to make it any funnier than it already is. Taco. Grande. So the... the the Latino gigolo song parody that he took. The parody, he made it about tacos. It, Taco Grande. So the 90s were a weird place. We were in a weird spot in the 90s. Nothing was offensive. Or like, we pretended like nothing was. And so we just did everything. And we just permitted everything. It was like the great test. It was a great experiment. There's something dated about this pacey pacey boy singing in a Spanish accent. I appreciate the Spanish food. I lived in LA for several years, but something about this song hits a little weird. It hits a little wrong. And the original is just so funny and very classic within itself. As Abby Shapiro would say, it's just so feminine and classic that I cannot deny it deserves a place in the hallmark of all time if we were to send one of those discs into space that has all the etchings of america and the world and what we are and what we would want to say to an alien species if they were to interpret it i want the song on there i want aliens the first thing they ever know about our civilization is there's a man named gerardo and he is a rico, a suave. In the grand pantheon of great hip-hop tracks, of brilliant, iconic hip-hop tracks from the 90s, I feel like Gangster Paradise sits at the top with the best of the best, the greats of the greats, living in these harsh areas and how being a gangster kind of overtakes the culture within those areas and how you do have to hustle to survive. You have to take control of your own life with the circumstances that you're given. I had attachment to Coolio from Sister Sister. They were obsessed with Coolio for some reason. That's all I remember from that show. Tamia and Tamara. Mia and Tamara. Tia and Tamara. Though I do wonder, since we have the In Fear and Faith version, which I love, and the Falling in Reverse version, which I love less, do we still need the original? Especially when Weird Al's version is just as iconic. We've been spending most our lives living in an Amish paradise. So out of the Weird Al songs, where he's sort of picking fun at a group, you know, women want to have lunch, tacos, grande, I'm fat, where he's sort of picking out stereotypes, I feel like Amish Paradise is the least offensive. Mostly because they're Amish. Fuck them. They can't play the CD. What would a person who grew up Amish, what would they have to rap about? What would be their truth? What would be their tune? What would they have to say? And for that, I think there's a lot of clever lines in it. Nothing oversets the boundaries into being uncomfortable. 4.30 in the morning, I'm milking cows. Jebediah feeds a chicken and Jacob plows. Fool. <laughs> the attitude put in it 
makes fun of it while still playing it straight. It's funny in concept, and he makes a performance very genuine, which is why I think this works so well. It's from the persona of this Amish rapper. And given the fact that this is the one parody that he was sued for the hardest by Coolio, because Coolio was not Coolio with it whatsoever, I think that this has stood the test of time as one of Weird Al's greatest. And I'm trying to praise Weird Al and not necessarily take away from the original. I want to make it perfectly clear, respect Coolio, like the guy, but I find this so much funnier. And with that, we have come to our final mashup. So far, we have four Weird Al songs and five original songs. Will Weird Al pull through with this final mashup and tie up our playlist? Now, when it comes to R&B, singer, songwriter groups, TLC is just the classiest of the bunch. Personally, I think Scrubs is the better hit than Waterfalls. You always hear, don't go chasing waterfalls as like a funny little line. Like, hey, don't go chasing waterfalls. When you see the context of the song, there's a lot more here. The first verse paints a picture of a mother looking out of her window, seeing her baby getting into trouble, maybe getting into gang-affiliated things, doing drugs, putting themselves in harm's way, and she can't do anything about it. He has to make his money the only way he knows how, and that could end him up in a gutter. And so the chorus, don't chase waterfalls, don't go for that big payout, don't do the illegal thing, don't reach for the thing that could drop you over the edge. Stick to the rivers, stick to the lakes that you know, the people that brought you here, the people that give you a home. I know you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all, but I think you're moving too fast. It's just a concerned song about the people around them. There's an awareness that they're bringing to the social climate, but it's also a really passionate song with a lot of empathy in it. So I think Waterfalls has a lot of merit, though I do find it a little bit on the slower side, and I wish that chorus came in just slightly heavier. Very curious how Weird Al is gonna parody this very serious and touching song. <laughs> Okay, so Weird Al, it's kind of the same tone and premise with someone doing something maybe ill-advised, someone doing something a little naughty. Instead of gang-related activity, this one is making phony phone calls, uh, prank calling, something we used to do for some reason because you wouldn't know your fucking phone was attached to the wall and it would ring, and then you walked up to it, you would grab it, and you would put it to your ear, not knowing what's gonna happen, not knowing what's gonna come. It could be anything. It could be good news. It could be bad news. It could be frightening. And sometimes they were pranks. Someone saying something funny to get you riled up, and then they hang up, and you go, well, kids. It's right here, and it's raining at you. Of course you're gonna answer it. What are you gonna do, just let it fucking rain? There's no silent button on here. That's the concept of this song. He keeps the integrity of it. His voice is a little stretched thin. It is gonna be difficult for one lonely white man to match the vocal qualities of three powerful, beautiful women. I like what he did here. I like the angle that he took the song, but I don't think it's a plus up from the song. It's hard when you're starting with a song that is so iconic with so much meaning and emotion behind it to then make it a light, fluffy song. It's easier with a song like Rico Suave or The White Stuff. So with that, I'm gonna have to give the final spot on our playlist to TLC, making the originals leading Weird Al. That makes perfect sense because they are the originals. They are the hits. These songs have stood the test of time, and they are still in our consciousness today, whether we want it or not. I didn't even grab all the parody songs 
off of these first couple of albums because there are just so many that I've never even heard of. I don't even care about them. I wanted to focus on the big ones that are still relevant to this very day. And we're not done yet. This video is just part one of three because we have so many more Weird Al songs to go and I'm excited to get through them. But for now, this is our playlist. This is what I chose. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What would you have chosen instead? Do you think I'm wrong on the Weird Al songs? Do you think I'm wrong on the originals? I'm excited to hear what comes next. Thank you for watching. I'm Grayson Todd. Listen to some good shit. Jam fucking Weird Al and MC Hammer fucking toodles. Why?